Hello, welcome to today's episode of Relationship Talks. On today's edition, very importantly, we address the first part of a series, what to do when you are in love. Yes, you heard me right. What to do when you're in love, but it's not the right time. In today's episode, we look at the very first part of that series, when it is not the right time. In the book of Songs of Solomon, the third chapter, the fifth verse, it says, I warn you, O sisters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles, yes, by the wild deer, not to excite love, not to stir it up until it is ripe, until you are ready until it's the right time. Truth is, there's a right time to love. There's a right time to love him. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, we understand that the Bible says there's a time to love and there's a time not to love. There's a timing to love. Many of the failed love relationships that didn't play out the way it's supposed to Failed not because it didn't have a chance, but because of the timing. There's a timing to love. And when love is expressed, when love is shown, when love is experienced at the wrong time, it invariably translates into wrong love. But not because there was anything wrong with the love, not because the love was not sincere, but because the love was not timed right. The Word of God is quite clear with examples and with clear clear instructions, straight up instructions on how to deal around such moments. Sometimes, and many times, several of us probably have experienced it in this life, and some will experience it later on. You've happened to be in love with someone or had feelings for someone, but it was ill-timed. And it's ill-timed, or we call time wrong for loving, when, for example, it is the wrong time for you, the lover, or for the person to whom you're expressing that love. So we see a two side to it. And we understand that for love really to work, it takes two. Because you may be ready, but the other person may not be ready. And so today we're going to see how to deal in such situations and what are the things that probably we can face and how to prepare ourselves to deal and to survive in such crucial moments. The truth is, every one of us loved to be, we, we love to be loved. We long to be loved the way we love. And so, in the expressions of your love and in your feeling of love, you expect it to be reciprocated. But many a man, many women have met with rejections or love that was never, never mutual. Love that was ill-timed. And so, sometimes we go through pain because of the disappointment that comes from loving and not being loved back. We're tortured because sometimes you have feelings and you love someone, but you're unable to express it. Sometimes you love someone who, or you have strong feelings for someone who is out and beyond your reach. Someone who it's just not possible for you to be together. But you cannot understand why the feelings are there because it's not like you have wrong feelings or unintended feelings or you have heal love towards that person and you definitely know that this is not lost but there is love and a sincere desire and longing to love and be loved for someone but timing becomes very important is it possible to time our love rightly is it possible for you to love at the right time the answer is yes but what do i do if for any reason i ever find myself loving at the wrong time the word of God is clear. In that scripture we just looked at, the book of Songs of Solomon, it says, do not excite love. Don't stir it up until the time is ripe, until you are ready. So the wisdom here is to make sure that as much as we can within our power, to make sure we do not intentionally stir and excite love for any person. Unless we first do the groundworks to be sure if the time is right, not just for us, but also for them. Because it's possible for someone to 
love, but the person you're loving is not ready. He or she is not ready to love back, to get into a relationship or to have anything yet with you. Not because they don't have thing, they don't have maybe a likeness for you or they do not value your friendship or love your person, but it's just not the time for them. And the word of God is quite clear and it's an instruction. It says, don't excite it until it's the right time. But many times because of human curiosity, sometimes and because of peer pressure, we find people who are pressed to want to take love to new levels. But God is calling his church today so that you avoid hurts and pains and wounding yourself. By reason of exposing yourself at the wrong time to feelings that you cannot contain. That leaves you wounded and crying on your pillows and shedding tears and nights of frustrations because you love someone that is out of reach. The best approach is to think. The best approach is to plan. The best approach is to ask questions. In my previous episode on relationship talk one of the things i made reference to was planning nothing is as beautiful as being mature we also looked at that the other time about being perfect mature enough to ask questions before falling and diving into love wholeheartedly as much as is within your power and i understand sometimes it's beyond our power but but in many times it is within our power especially at the early phases, as much as it is within your power, ask questions, make inquiries. In the phases where you are still in friendship or just in acquaintance with the person, ask questions. Know if it is a safe ground for you to land. Before an aeroplane lands in an, in an airport, there is constant communication. You don't just land in hope that you will be well received. You could be mistaken for a terrorist. Your plane could be, could be attacked. So the right thing to do will be for the man in the aeroplane to communicate with the man at the control terminal of the airport. Ask questions. This is what maturity and relationship is about. Ask questions. In the period where I was, where, well, I and my wife, um, now my wife were in friendship, I would say, before, we even, before I even expressed my feelings to her. There's something I always knew. There's something I always did was to ask questions. I asked her questions like, when do you intend to get into a relationship? It's crucial because you have to realize that this time I was already conceiving and having desires in my head and in my heart. But I never made anything known. I was asking questions. I was communicating with the, con with the man at the control tower. When would you want to get in a relationship? I made sure I had my answers a long time before I even made feelings known. The second question I asked was, when would you want to get married? So from the very foundations, I was prepared. The Bible says, which of you want to build a house will not go in? Calculating the cost if he has enough to not just start but also to finish. And so I made sure I made enough inquiries and I asked. And when I saw that the cost was clear and the ground was good and it was convenient with me and I knew that she would be ready at a time where I am okay, I'll be ready, then I, at the right time, that time which she wanted, I made my move. So I made my move in her season, in her open season. I could have expressed my feelings and my love and everything at a time when she, is not, she was not ready. And it could have done one of two things. It could have frightened her away. It could have made her feel like, you know, I was not hearing from God or she was not hearing from God. But I waited till the runway was clear so that I could land. And when I asked my questions and when I made my proposals to her, they became, they became opportunity for me to be received. But even sometimes when the person is not ready or when you are sure you are ready, you have done every groundwork, things may still not play out just with a smooth sail. In my scenario, for example, I asked my wife out, I made my feelings known, but lo and behold, I was kept waiting. I was kept waiting for almost a year, several months for sure. But well, here is the test. What do you do when you are strongly in love, but the person you're having feelings for, you love, that you're sure, for example, is not ready? Or the person just isn't ready yet and so keeps you waiting? This is where the test of your maturity comes into play, the test of your perfection. This is where the real test is. I've seen people chicken out. I've seen people give up very quickly. 
it's either a case of immaturity or it's just a case of you're not being ready and the time was never ripe for you. When you really want something and have made up your mind and you're sure this person is the one, just the one thing you can do for sure is to at least wait. So what it means is you have to be understanding with that person. Because sometimes reaching decisions, whether it's a male or a female, and it doesn't matter in this case, doesn't happen suddenly. People have to go through things, their thought process, and we are all programmed differently. In my scenario, to the glory of God, I was mature enough, I was trained enough, I had, I had reached the perfection enough to understand and to wait. So what do you do when you are in love with someone, but the person isn't ready? So apparently, as you would see, in those many months, my now wife was not ready then even to tell me a yes for a relationship. But I was not perturbed. I was patient. This is why it's important to first mature. So you do not put yourself in pressures unnecessarily, and you do not face self-induced heartbreaks. Think about it in the case of Jesus, and I'll conclude with this one. In the life of Jesus Christ, when he loved us, we were not ready. When he came and gave his life for us, we were not ready. When salvation was preached to us for the first time, when Christ was presented to us for the first time, we still were not ready. Did Jesus give up on us? No. If you are convinced that somebody is for you and that you'd love to spend your life with that person all the days of your life, and for some reason the person is not ready in the moment, but you are sure you're mature and trained enough and you're sure you have what it takes to wait, then wait it out. Be patient. We could have considered other options and such there are such other options if for any reason you feel you are not prepared enough and you cannot wait that's also fine and that's understandable because we're constructed differently but if you have what it takes to wait just because the person is keeping you waiting does not mean that you quit i know people who waited for someone for years before they finally got that person to say yes and marry that person so there are many sides to it but very key at the bottom of all of this is your maturity that will help you to be an understanding and a patient person. It is God's desire that when you go about any business that you don't just start it, but also that you finish it. So while waiting, whether it is you that is ready or not ready, or the other person who is ready or not ready, it's important that you try to work in understanding. It's on this note I'll conclude on this very first series. Next time, we'll look at the second one on what to do when you are in love. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.